Kia ora friends, welcome back to my studio. I'm Gina and in today's video I'm going to be creating an artist studio. I've already started by creating some of the accessories which I'm going to be adding into the scene and in today's video I'm going to be starting off with creating the walls um, using a bit of 3mm MDF which I've already cut to size so this is uh, the height of it so I want it to have a bit of a warehousey type feel. I've also created a stack of canvases so this is basically 3mm MDF as well and I've just created a bit of uh, white uh, gesso on it and I'll be painting up some miniature uh, paintings so uh, of all different types and then I'm probably going to leave a couple of them blank as well so I've got already those prepared um, and I've also got a bit of a plan so this is a, a rough sketch that I've um, mapped out just to make sure that I know where the placing of the different pieces of furniture will go. I want to create some sort of open shelving and probably a table as well. So those are the things I'm going to be creating today. So let's get started. So to begin with I'm going to start by creating the roller door and this roller door is going to be at the back of the project and I'm going to use some corrugated paper in order to create the metal look on the door this is blue but we're going to be painting it with a gray undertone and then also a silver over the top but I'm just going to cut this to size and then I'm going to glue it onto the back it's not going to be opening it is just going to be a faux door at the back then I'm going to put a surround around it as well just to make it look like it is actually it could actually be working but it's not it's a faux door so I'm just going to glue that into place and then move on to the next step so to create the top piece which is the roller where the roller door would roll into I've just cut down a piece of foam board and then I'm wrapping that with some mat board around the edges just to cover up the foam and then this is going to give me the uh, boxed out look at the very top of the door. So once I'm happy with that uh, I can set that aside and then work on the the two side pieces or the rails where the door would roll into or the guides basically on each side of the door and because it's actually sitting on top of the wall I need to put these smaller pieces along the side first and then I put a slightly larger piece over the top so that the door looks like it's sort of slid in behind those panels. Once I've got those into place then I can pop that top piece on and, tr and just center that. And then that's basically the door all done nice and easy so to paint the walls I'm just going to use a rough coat of gesso it is in white because I really want the paint splatters and all the other details to really pop against the white background so to glue the walls together I'm just going to help support the glue as it dries just with a bit of tape and I'm just going to tape those um, into place before I put the glue on being 3mm MDF it's quite um, thin and there's not a lot of uh, surface area for the glue to grab hold of so I want to give it its best opportunity to glue into place um, it has got a little bit of a warp in it as well which is expected to having just being quite thin so once I'm happy with that and got that lined up I can just wrap that tape around and that's just going to hold it into place while the, while the glue dries and I'm just going to do the same for the other wall as well and then I'm just going to set that aside and let that dry and this is what it looks like just at a first view. So for the floor I'm just going to use some 5mm foam board and I'm going to use some cork as well so this is quite thin cork it's sort of stuff that you'd use for a pegboard and I'm just going to glue that directly onto the foam board and then just cut away the excess and I'm going to use this because I want to create a concrete look effect on the floor and cork is a really good way to do that. So again I'm just going to glue that into place and then using some tape I'm just going to hold that use that to hold it until it dries and now we can kind of move on to creating some of the beams so these are the eye beams that are going to go across the ceiling and I'm just going to cut these there out of some one millimeter thick mat board and just cutting the center piece slightly longer than the two end pieces and then I'm just going to glue those together so just by trying to find the center line of the smaller piece and gluing the main uh, upright uh, into place and then the other the other smaller piece goes on the other end so when you look down the end of this particular beam it looks like the letter I it was the capital I and so that's why it's called an I beam 
and I'm just going to put a base coat of this rusty orange on although I do go back over and spray paint them which you kind of lose a little bit of this but I just wanted to give it the illusion that this is sort of a rust uh, preventive type of coating that would have normally gone on the beams anyway and then I'm just going to use some of these little embellishments they're just little tiny little gems and I'm just going to glue those into place for the rivets as if they beams were actually riveted into place. So once I'm happy with where they are I'm just going to go over and give them a little touch of paint just to blend them in. So I'm just going to set up my spray booth and just use the this spray can that I had for another project but I thought this would work perfectly fine and I'm just going to give them a bit of a coat of the bronze effect, it's sort of a hammered effect actually so it looks quite good. I'm going to move on to creating the table now so this is some balsa wood um, that I actually got from my stepfather so this is being put to use and I'm just going to create the top piece of it's going to be quite thick and then the bottom shelf I want to cut away where the legs go so I'm just carefully cutting that those little squares away and then I can glue the legs into place so I'm going to start by gluing them to the shelf because that's going to have the largest glue area and then I can just glue the top on so that's kind of how the legs are going to go there like that so once I'm happy with the shelf then I can glue the top onto the base and then it's starting to look like a table and just to finish it off I'm just going to run a couple of strips of thinner balsa wood around the outside just to give it a little bit more substance and then for the open shelving which I'm also going to create I'm just going to create some five shelves which are about a, an inch wide and then I'm going to use some um, these are actually bamboo skewers and I'm going to use a round nail file just cutting off the very corner and I'm, which the round file is about the same diameter as the skewers and I'm just going to file into the corner in order to give the bamboo skewers somewhere to hold on to. Once I'm happy with where all the shelves are sitting I can put the other two uprights in place uh, and then I can let, put it aside to dry. So for the paint effect on the table I wanted to give it a little bit of an aged effect and also give it a sort of a base where the paint uh, splatters will actually show through quite well. So in order to do this I'm actually going to do a base coat of brown so as if it's got a dark wood effect and I'm just going to paint this all over the table and I'm going to do the same paint effect onto the shelf as well. And that's what they look like with the base coat on and then over the top I just uh, mixed up a bit of white with the same brown just to sort of tone down the brightness of the white a little bit and then I'm just going to sort of very roughly brush this over the top I'm not too worried about if there's any gaps missing because I'm actually going to run over with a bit of sandpaper just to sort of scuff it up and hopefully that brown paint base color will show through underneath the white then once I've done that I'm just going to go back over with a wash. So one thing that I wanted to create was a air conditioning unit that was sitting in the ceiling and this this piece of plastic here is actually a little piece that I had in my stash. I can't, I don't, I can't remember what it was off um, but I thought it was it's perfect and so I've just got some smoothie straws as well which I've used in previous projects and this is a bit of um, embroidery mesh, it's plastic mesh but it cuts really nicely and I'm just going to use that for the center grate and then the two smoothie straws either side and then I've just got a bit of EVA foam here just to kind of cover up where the where the straws meet the bit of plastic and then I'm just going to use those same little rivets as if it's got uh, if it's, as if it's, there's been some plates been riveted over the top and then once I've got a base coat of the gray onto the straws and the same with the with that a little mesh I can actually go back over and, and paint them with a bit of silver just sort of a light dry brush over the top and then just with a bit of super glue I'm just going to glue those into place and there's our little air conditioning unit so for the roof I'm going to make a start on it in this video but I'm going to come back to it in the next video I'm using that same corrugated paper one is a bright red very bright and the other is the same blue that's on the door so I just wanted to kind of layer up some patches as if the roof has been patched then I can come back and add some paint and rust effects uh, a little bit later. So once I've got these glued in place I'm actually just going to take it over to my little spray booth 
I've got some grey primer that I'm actually going to use. It gives a really great coverage. It's really quick and easy to get into all of those grooves. So this is a really nice quick and easy way to get a really good even finish. And then what I'm going to do once that's dry is just put a little bit of a dry brush of the silver over the top. Because I really want this to be patchy. I want this to be an aged roof as if it's been there for, for forever and it just keeps on getting patched over. So this is the silver coat, then I'm actually going to do a rust sort of effect over it. But like I say, that'll be in the next video, so please stay tuned for that. Uh, using just a little bit of grey paint, I'm just going to go over the blue. I do do a couple of coats over this blue just to kind of dull it down a little bit. I was kind of debating should I keep it as if it's been painted. You know, it's an artist studio, maybe it could have had, you know, a little bit of colour in it. But I did opt to actually just paint it out to that silver colour, just almost the same colour as the roof. And the reason why I did that is because I really want the painting and the paintwork in the studio to really pop. And I didn't want it to be competing with the door and the background, which is really just a sort of a background feature of the room. So using that same grey, I'm just going to coat the floor in an even coat of this the same paint. It kind of comes up with a bit of a concrete look and once it's dry, it dries matte, a matte finish rather than a satin finish. So I'm really happy with how that's turned out. I may put a wash over it as well, but just for now, it is absolutely exactly what I need. So here you can see that I've actually added a couple of coats of that grey, and then I'm doing the same type of effect as I did on the roof, and just really kind of very lightly dry brushing, or sort of roughly roughly painting the silver over the top, because I really wanted to give it that sort of semi-textured look. I didn't want it to be all one colour. So just with a smaller straw I'm just going to cut it on a 45 degree. I want to create a bit of conduit up the side of the garage door up to that main sort of roller door panel up the top to give it the illusion that it's got electrical cable going out to power the actual door itself. So this is it in place and I'm pretty happy with that and you can see the beams as well as the aircon unit. So moving on to actually creating some paintings and I'm going to leave this to a lovely montage.
And that's all I've got time for today. I didn't quite get as much through as much as what I would have hoped, but I'm pretty happy with where we've got to. I will finish this project in the next video, so stay tuned for that. And if you haven't done so already, consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you've liked this video and really would like to leave a comment, please do so. It really does help the channel. So thank you all for coming this far on the journey with me. And until next time, I'll see you then. Bye for now. Thank you.